Today, I'm gonna to give you my long-term runner's review of the Whoop Band after three months. Eight point two two miles, nine minutes, thirteen seconds per mile, one hundred and thirty five beats per minute today. Going for a nice and easy recovery run. Had a hard run the day before that, and wanted to follow that up with a low heart rate, very easy run. I did have a little bit of fun out there, running through some of the icy stuff along the lakefront. But other than that, for the most part, taking it super nice and easy, just to get the legs moving, the blood flowing. And I thought today would be a good day to talk about this Whoop band that I've been wearing all day, every day for the last three months. Now, before I give you my detailed thoughts on that, I do want to go with some disclosures. The Whoop band is something that I purchased myself. No one sent it to me or is paying me to make this video. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before this video goes on YouTube. I'm also gonna be talking about a couple of other different devices, a heart rate monitor and a GPS watch. One of those was sent to me for a review and one of those I purchased myself. I'll put more detail about that in the description below, but in either event, no one's paying me to put any of their devices in this video or to include it. And again, still no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or thoughts before the video goes up. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about the Whoop armband. What is this thing? It doesn't have a screen uh, on the top. It's just uh, this band that you see all the way around. But underneath, that's where all the sensors are. And there's three sensors to this device. There's an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a heart rate monitor. The heart rate monitor probably being the most kind of like key fact about it. And with those three sensors, what it can track is how hard you're working through your workouts, whether it's running or any other physical activity, plus any other strain that your body is experiencing throughout the day. And it also takes your sleep and how well you're sleeping, how long you're sleeping, the quality of your sleep. And from those two things, it can then tell you how recovered you are for the next day. So it's something that you can look at on a daily basis, on a day-to-day -day basis, but not something that you need a screen to look at directly, to look at on kind of like a, a micro level or an instantaneous level. From there, it gets with that recovery number, it can help you make decisions on that daily basis as to how hard should I work today? What should I be looking out for? Should I be looking out for being more hydrated, getting more sleep, being a little bit more restful? All those kinds of decisions it can help you do on a daily basis. Then on a long-term basis, as this device gets to collect more of your data and understand you and your needs better, you can then start to give you guidance. And the main two areas of guidance it gives you is in terms of sleep coach and strain coach. The sleep coach is something that you can have an option to look at, like if you just wanna get by for the next day, perform for the next day or peak for the next day, let's say you have a race, that's something that you can kind of tweak within the app and it'll tell you, all right, if you want to peak tomorrow, for example, or in the next couple of days, here's how much sleep that you need to be getting. And so it gives you some guidance based on how much you normally sleep. It even takes into account how long you typically take from the moment that your head hits the pillow to fall asleep. And it adds that all in there in terms of its recommendation. Then in terms of the strain coach, it can take a look at how much you've been working out in relation to how well you've been recovering and sleeping and kind of give you some trends in terms of, is your fitness improving? Is your fitness not improving? What are some of the metrics that it can look at to tell you like where your body is in terms of its day-to-day -day strain? Are you stressing it too much and not recovering enough? So it can tell you if you're in that overreaching zone. So those are the things that Whoop 
promises that it can do. Let's actually take a look at some of the data. So first let's look at the sleep coach and I'm just gonna look at a little bit of data to give you kind of a sample of the kind of thing that I've been seeing over the last three months. This isn't a statistical analysis in terms of was this representative of all the nights of experience that I've had with this device, but it is what happened last night and to me, from like a gut check, it seems to be about what I've been seeing when I compare the Whoop to say uh, a running GPS watch, in this case, the Polar Vantage V2. So last night, for example, the Whoop told me that I got six hours and four minutes of sleep, which uh, is about what I shoot for. I like to get six to seven hours of sleep. Sometimes I get more, sometimes I get less. Usually it's less. Uh, of that time, Whoop told me I had 46% of my time sleeping in REM sleep, which seems really high. And it told me that it seems like it was pretty high and probably I needed to catch up on other previous nights where I haven't been getting enough REM sleep, which may make sense because I have not been sleeping all that well this last week. I had a lot of changes going on, move from Iowa back to Chicago. That was one of the things we did. So a lot of different like things happening, not really getting as much restful sleep as usual. The heart rate while sleeping was 54 beats per minute. Uh, heart rate variability was 36, I believe that's in milliseconds, and 14.4 breaths per minute as I was sleeping, which for me is a little bit high, uh, normal-ish for the winter time because I'm running outside in the cold temperatures. I feel like I'm always constantly kind of battling a little bit of a, is that a cold kind of coming on? That kind of thing because I'm spending a lot of time running out in the really cold temperatures here. Um, but 14.4, a little high, but within kind of normal for me. On the Polar Watch, for the same night of sleep, I wore them both to bed like I do every night. I got six minutes, six hours and 18 minutes of sleep, so a little bit more sleep. Only 17% of that time did the Polar Watch think that I was in REM sleep. I had the same, um, a lot of the other numbers are pretty close where I had 54 beats per minute for my sleeping heart rate, which is exactly the same as the Whoop. 38 uh, milliseconds for heart rate variability, which is pretty spot on in terms of what the Whoop gave me, and 13.8 breaths per minute while I was sleeping, which is seems more like what's normal for me in the numbers that I've been seeing both across the Polar and the Whoop, um, but it is a lot lower than what Whoop gave me on this particular night. For the most part, other than the REM sleep, um, I find that both of these devices give me pretty much the same information uh, on a night to night basis in terms of like measuring those sleep metrics. Now let's talk about not only just sleep and recovery, let's talk about some strain as well. So today for the run, it was an easy run, a recovery day run. And uh, when I go running, I usually wear not only my running GPS watch, but I also have an external heart rate monitor. When I have strenuous activity, uh, heart rate readings from the wrist tend to not really work out that well for me. So I like to either have a chest strap heart rate monitor that I wear during the summertime, or when it gets colder, I like to put on this armband heart rate monitor that goes kind of up higher uh, on the arm just below the elbow, and I get a much better, much more reliable reading in that location. With the Whoop, I've done a couple of different things. There's a little bit of extra slack in this Whoop band for me. And so what I've done is I've Sometimes I've tried running with it kind of like as loose as it can and just sliding it as far as it'll go and usually goes kind of up to here. Not quite as high as I would like it for like an armband reading, but kind of up to here is where it can get. Sometimes it would slide down because it's just up so high and this, I think maybe the weight of this device isn't quite right or maybe the stretchiness of the material isn't quite right, but it doesn't always stay up there. But when I can't, I tend to get a better heart rate reading. When I leave it on the wrist, that's when I don't really get all that great a reading at all, which is not necessarily its fault. I think it's just heart rate sensor technology, even the GPS watch, if I leave it on my wrist, if I just use the wrist reading, I get a similarly like kind of incorrect reading. And so comparing the wrist-based heart rate reading from the Whoop for today's run against the external heart rate monitor that I put in a more favorable position, here are the, some of the numbers that I got. The Whoop, there's no buttons on this to tell it like when to start recording, so it just kind of detects. So it gave me an hour and 38 minutes of total activity. And the beginning part of that was actually my warm up. So it gave me like more activity time than normal, which ultimately, you know, it's, I think it's kind of nice that it's including the warm up in terms of my overall strain for the day in terms of what did I do today. So that part, I, I don't mind. I think that's fine. Uh, but here's where the problems are. When I was actually running, the heart rate readings were 
predictably off. So it gave me an average heart rate of 163, and that's including like my warm up phase with a max heart rate of 184. I don't even think my heart rate can get to 184. I think my heart rate max is somewhere closer to 181. So to say that today on an easy run, I maxed out beyond my max heart rate, that, that's something that tells me that something's off. It also said that I spent 60 minutes at 90 to 100% of my max heart rate, which again, from the feeling of running easy today and also looking at the other heart rate data that I have, I know that that was off as well. So the amount of strain that this thing thinks that I put myself under today is definitely off. I don't even think that I can run at 90% heart rate for 60 minutes straight. So, I mean, maybe I could do that in a total workout, but not straight. And it kind of said that it looks like that's what it's thinking that I did. The Polar Watch and the heart rate monitor that I had gave me an hour and 15 minutes and that was me starting and stopping the activity. So that's gonna be the more accurate running time for today. Uh, and the average heart rate was 135 beats per minute. So that makes more sense and is con very consistent with how hard I felt like I was running. The max heart rate that it gave me was 155, also like much lower uh, than my max heart rate and certainly not anywhere in that 90 to 100% of uh, max heart rate for, for today. Um, so I had 0% of time in that higher heart rate range today. So those numbers are very different. And that's one of the big problems with it is that if the amount of recovery that it's giving me is based on not only how I slept, but how hard I worked, if it's overestimating how hard I worked, that recovery number, that ratio of like sleep to activity is going to be off. So it's gonna throw off some of its kind of understanding of me in a lot of ways. So that, that's one problem that I have with the heart rate uh, that's right here. Here's another kind of weird thing that's popped up mainly since we've returned from Iowa where we were with my in-laws for several months when I, for the majority of the time that I was wearing this device to now when we're back in Chicago. Something that I noticed is that the Whoop has been attributing to me some additional activities. Now, sometimes I would see additional activities other than running in the morning. Uh, like if I would take the kids for a long walk, play outside in the snow, take the dogs for a longer walk, you know, that kind of thing. It would automatically detect that my heart rate was up for a sustained period of time and count that as an activity. Great, again, like taking into account everything that I'm doing in a day, I think is really good. But lately, the last two days specifically, I've noticed that it has given me an activity about 30 minutes long, right around dinner time. And I was like, I know that I'm not out there doing any activity. I wasn't taking the kids for a walk. We did walk the dog, but it wasn't 30 minutes long, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and I realized that that's when I was making dinner. So I was cooking, you know, chopping, slicing, that kind of thing. But also uh, we have a really small kitchen and no dishwasher. So as I cook, I like to do a lot of, you know, hand dishwashing as I'm going. And so I don't know if it's just detecting, I don't know why my heart rate would be higher, but maybe it's detecting the extra motion and that motion and some of the play that's in this band, it's being detected as a faster heart rate, even though my heart rate might be, you know, a little elevated, but not like super high. Cause it's not like I'm working out in there, I'm just cooking. So uh, yeah, the amount of activity that attributed to me just definitely isn't right. So yesterday I had an activity of 29 minutes long where my average heart rate is 133 beats per minute. In other words, the same as when I went out, or pretty much the same as when I went out and ran eight miles this morning. Um, with 172 beats per minute as the max heart rate for that activity uh, and 11 minutes at 70 to 80% heart rate. So uh, it was saying that like while I was cooking dinner and that's the time I was cooking dinner yesterday, uh, I was building aerobic fitness. So that's something that, and it did the same thing the night before. So that's something that like, I think is gonna also throw off like how fit it thinks I am and how or how not fit it thinks I am based on me like just trying to run uh, easy miles today, but needing to basically max out my heart rate in order to do so. So that's all gonna throw things off as well. And so this heart rate monitor, although it's really good, I mean, heart rate monitors of all types tend to be really good for measuring things for me when I'm sleeping. It's just like when I'm moving around a lot, that's when things start to kind of go haywire. But I generally need a different kind of like armband setup if I'm gonna use a heart rate monitor 
during an activity. They sell like another armband that can go on the bicep. I never ended up buying that one. I wish that just like this band were a little bit longer so I could put it like right up here and get it into a secure location where it wouldn't move. I would move it up there for running like I tried to do. Um, and then when I was wearing it like daily use and sleeping, I could just readjust it and move it back further down. That would probably be like my main like wish for this product that they would do going forward. I don't think it would solve all my problems, but I think my data would be better. Um, I really think that the product should include like the armband for people that have problems, which I think is a, a good majority, maybe not majority, but a solid minority of people that have a problem with wrist-based heart rate during an activity. I just think that other band should be included or able to be like, click, can I request one of those too? Um, so that's one of the things that I really thought was missing from this entire experience. So other than that, all that being said, let's go to the overall pros and cons for this device uh, after three months from my runner's perspective. Let's continue with the cons. We're already kind of, I'm, I'm in that mode already. The heart rate accuracy, as I've been talking about, is definitely a problem. In addition to that, I do, I do think that like the strap here, like at first felt really nice. It felt like premium, but over time, as I got like sweaty in it, uh, it just started to like kind of lose its shape a little bit. It's still like somewhat stretchy. It's not as stretchy as it was, but I just don't feel like it's a premium product over time. So like, I wish that there were a nicer band that came with this, especially for the price that they're asking for for this device. So I felt like the strap left a lot to be desired, not only in length, but also in like material as well. The third area where I didn't really like the strap is that I'm running in the winter time now where typically the temperatures are below freezing. I'm not getting super drippy with sweat when I'm out there. I might get a little bit like kind of clammy in my arms, but at no point are they like wet with sweat. Yet when I come home from a run and I take this thing off, this wristband is always damp and it stays damp like long after the time it takes me to like, you know, recover, take a shower, eat breakfast, and then put all my like, you know, wearables back on. This thing is still wet. So a lot of times I just forget to put it back on the entire morning, sometimes not until the evening towards even dinner time because I just have forgotten about it. So I, I wish that there was a way that it could either dry faster or if they went with that kind of two strap idea, then I could exercise and it's relatively easy to swap out bands. I wish it were a little bit easier, but it's relatively easy. And I could have like the bicep band or the upper arm band for when I'm working out, that one gets wet and then I dry it out, let it dry for the next day. And then I have like my, my like everyday walking around band kind of thing that I put on after my workout. That's another thing that, again, I could purchase an additional accessory to do that, but I think that that's something that really should just be included because it's something that's intended to be worn all day for active people. The last like main issue that I have with it is that is it redundant? I have a GPS watch. It recorded a lot of the same metrics that the Whoop recorded in terms of sleep. It records all the same metrics in terms of activity as the Whoop does. But I think that because it can connect to an external heart rate monitor, it can connect to an external foot pod, you can connect to all sorts of different other sensors as well as it contains a bunch of sensors itself. Do I need to be wearing two things at the same time? This doesn't have like a uh, a watch face on it. So it can't tell me things like pace, like when I'm training for a run or how much power I'm exerting during an interval workout or my heart rate is during an easy run. So it can't tell me any of those things. So if I want that data, which I do, I need to have a watch anyway. If I want the whoop data, then I also have to wear the whoop because I can't get the whoop service, even if I'm getting heart rate data from something else, even if I were wearing a heart rate monitor like 24 seven, which I am. So like, is it redundant? For me, I think it is because I am getting a lot of that data from a Polar, this one being the Polar Vantage V. And not all watches do it as well in terms of like outside of the activity, like when you're sleeping and being able to tell you what your sleep meant and how good your sleep was. I think Polar does a better job than some of the other companies at giving some of the more whoop light features. And so that sets it apart in my mind as one of the running GPS watches that makes the whoop a little bit redundant. But overall, I feel like most of the GPS running watches that are out there can give you some very similar types of information. Whoop does the kinds of things that Whoop does better, but at the base of it is that heart rate during your activities that for me is always gonna be wrong. And that's gonna throw everything else that Whoop gives me off by a little bit. So for me, I'm pretty happy to be kind of like done with the Whoop. I'm gonna be taking it off after this video and I don't think that I'm really 
going to miss it. But that's not to say it's like a waste of money and it's not for anyone. Let me go over some of the pros, the things that I think that are good about this device. I love the way it lays out data. I think the data layout is beautiful. Uh, I do like the way Polar lays out its data as well. I think Whoop does it better. I think of all the devices I've ever t tested, Whoop lays out data for like consumption on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and on a monthly basis, much better than any other brand that I've looked at. It's just easier the way that they do it. I don't have to like click drop down boxes, select date ranges, it's just there. And I think that Whoop does a fantastic job of teaching slash reminding what these numbers mean. It puts the numbers in context for me pretty regularly without being annoying about it either. Like sometimes when, you know, there's always like reminders, like here's what heart rate means. You know, sometimes like other apps might do that and have like really basic stuff that they explain over and over and leave other stuff like heart rate variability, kind of like, here's your number. I think they do a really good job of balancing what they need to teach and remind and what they don't need to with Whoop. Everything on that end is really thoughtfully laid out. The app and the analytics, what it does with your data, how it presents the data to you, how it helps you understand your data. I think that's where like the value is in this service. And I think for like a couple of months, that $30 a month is certainly worth it. I learned a lot about myself in terms of like, what numbers should I be looking at? How did that correlate to how I feel, how I'm recovering, how much activity am I doing? How much activity can I take on? I think those are all great. But from like a long-term perspective, I don't, see myself like using this for very long. So uh, it was kind of an expensive way to learn some of what the data that my device is already providing to me means. Uh, but I think very useful kind of exercise, to so to speak, um, for me in terms of learning how to understand the metrics and getting a sense and feel for what your body is telling you, messages that we've either never learned how to interpret or have kind of forgotten how to listen for. I think the Whoop really can be helpful in that regard for a different kind of athlete, for a different kind of active person. But for runners, especially long distance runners, endurance athletes, I'm just not sure we need it if we've already got a GPS watch. So those are my thoughts on the Whoop long-term from a runner's perspective. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about it. I'd love to answer them there. Or better yet, I do a live stream just about every day on YouTube. You can always feel free to ask me any questions you like there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully staying safe out there on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?